Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. The time is now 6.50 on the dot. Very cloudy start to our morning on this Friday. But hey, the good news is it's Friday. The weekend is finally here. Well, our top story today, the Senate Judiciary Committee is set to vote this morning on Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court. Yesterday, Senate lawmakers heard testimony from Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, who claims Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her when they were both in high school. Kavanaugh, who also testified, maintains his innocence. The nearly nine hours of testimony didn't do much to change the opinions of Montana's two U.S. Senators. In a statement from Senator John Tester's communications director, Marne Banks, she states Senator Tester, quote, finds Dr. Ford's testimony credible and the accusations against Judge Kavanaugh deeply troubling. John will be taking time to review the full transcripts of the hearing as well as the judge's record and will continue to listen to the people of Montana about this lifetime appointment to the highest court in the land. Senator Steve Daines sided with Judge Kavanaugh saying, as I watched it today, I concluded that there is no corroborating evidence to support the serious allegation. Rather, this seems to be be an orchestrated smear campaign intended to destroy Judge Kavanaugh at the 11th hour. The Democrats turned this process into an embarrassing political circus that will have lasting effects for generations to come. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, the FBI is trying to figure out how a missing boy with autism died. A search team found a body believed to be Maddox Rich in a heavily wooded area on Thursday. The boy's father says he went missing after he ran after a jogger at the park last weekend. Here in Billings, police are asking for the public's help in the search for a missing Billings man last seen near Colson Park. 66-year-old Edward Robinson was last heard from on September 16th. His vehicle was found by law enforcement officials at Colson Park. A press release says Robinson is known to wade in the river in the area looking for driftwood. Detectives, along with the Billings Fire Department, Swift Water Rescue Team, have begun a search in the area of the river and the banks. Police say at this time there is no indication of foul play. While, Mo while Montana State University in Bozeman touts another jump in enrollment, MSU Billings is starting the school year with slightly fewer students than last fall semester. Enrollment is down 2% or 86 students for 2018. MSUB has about 4,300 students total. That's 2,749 at the university and 1,566 at City College. Of those students, nearly 4,000 are under, undergraduates and about 350 are graduates. Dual enrollment or high school students taking college classes did increase nearly 17 percent. On the western side of the state, University of Montana may no longer be known for its humanities department. That is, if proposed budget cuts actually happen. The entire department, with the exception of computer science and Native American studies, will go away. That's just some of the information out this week as school leaders presented an updated plan Thursday to get the school's budget in check and still educate its students. A collaborative process that includes community input has left the university with a detailed outline on budget cuts that will need to be, be fulfilled by 2021. This leaves departments three years to progressively ease into these cuts instead of executing them all at once. Now we go to Helena, where more than a year after a Confederate memorial fountain was removed from a park, a group seeking a replacement has released four possible designs. The Equity Fountain Project, a group of artists, architects, and other community members officially unveiled four proposed designs for a new piece of public art they'd like to see at the site. The committee will take public input into consideration when they choose a final design. They'll then offer the piece to the city as a gift. It will be up to the Helena City Commission to decide whether to accept it for Hill Park. The committee is seeking to raise about $100,000 to pay for the new art piece and future maintenance. So far, $65,000 has been raised. For the first time in nine years, the Billings Fire Department is getting back in local classrooms to teach kids about fire prevention. Their strategy, combine education with entertainment. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> 
The fire department teamed up with local school districts to make the week of presentations at the Lincoln Center possible. Due to funding restrictions, their in-school programs discontinued several years ago. But this year, Fire Chief Bill Rash helped bring it back to life. 1,500 area third graders learned about the importance of fire prevention this week. And who better to help than their friend, Patty Cakes the Clown. Well, this year we have a professional clown who happens to be a firefighter who will be teaching fire safety to all the third graders. And this approach provides the fire safety information, but also in an entertaining way that holds the attention of the kids. And with Fire Prevention Week upon us, the Billings Fire Department is hosting open houses at all seven of its fire stations, October 1st through the 10th. It gives the public an opportunity to learn more on fire safety and get a behind the scenes look at daily operations. For a full list of dates, times and locations, you can visit this story at KTBQ.com.